Okay, so this week's video was supposed to be about this engine that's underneath the cover right there, but uh, things happened, got some delays, had to wait for some parts, and I didn't get the video done for this engine this week. So, but hopefully we can have that, uh, we can do a video about that next week, but uh, for right now I, I can't quite do it. So. What I thought I would do is a video, and yeah, it's going to be one of those whiteboard videos where I do uh, talk about stuff on that, but uh, what I thought I'd do is do a little talk about compression ratio, and not necessarily what compression ratio is, because I think if you're here, you probably already know what that is and how to figure out what yours is. So, And there's already a lot of videos out there about compression ratio and... Um, how to calculate it and you know how it's what uh, what it does for you but uh, what I thought I would do in this video is just do like it's almost gonna be kinda of like an opinion video because there's a good saying out there is that uh, if you don't have data then all you got is, a, is an opinion and in this video I don't have data so basically what I've got here is an opinion and I'm gonna tell you my opinion about why it is that raising your compression ratio improves the performance of the engine. So let's go have a look at the whiteboard and we can talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so I've got a little diagram here, over here, and like I said, I'm not really going to go over how to figure out how to calculate compression ratio and everything, but I've got a little diagram here, you know, your piston, connecting rod, crankshaft, and I know that's not uh, put together right there, I'm kind of seeing that now, but you get the idea. But the idea with the compression ratio is that um, it's basically the volume of your cylinder plus the volume of your combustion chamber divided by the, the volume of the combustion chamber. So basically the red volume plus the blue volume divided by the blue volume is your uh, compression ratio. What we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're gonna look at the, the, the system, the engine, on what's called a pressure volume diagram or a PV diagram. And let me start out by, uh, there's about four, there's a few points on here that uh, are kind of important. And what the, the cycle we're going to be looking at there is something called an auto cycle. And there's a few points on this that are uh, kind of important. Kind of looks something like this. This isn't going to be perfect, but we'll, I'm going to do my best. This is roughly what the auto cycle looks like on a PV diagram. You know, we've got the uh, we've got a few events that happen in a in a four cycle engine or a four stroke engine, and what we'll look at them here is uh, basically what you got starting out. Start out at one, two, three, and four. So what we are here, this, consider that to be bottom dead center on the compression stroke. So the piston's moving up in the bore, the pressure is going up due to the compression, and now we're basically at top dead center on the compression stroke. So we went from bottom dead to top dead, compressing the gas along the way, and the pressure went up. And then what happens on this diagram is the, the, uh, the spark plug goes off, you burn the fuel, and then all that energy gets released and the pressure goes up, right? So now we're, now we're at three, we're at the beginning of the power stroke. Now the piston's on its way back down, the volume is increasing because the piston's moving back down and, and the pressure's going down correspondingly. And then at four, what happens is the exhaust valve opens and so basically here we're at the bottom of the power stroke and at least on this diagram, the, uh, the exhaust valve opens there, and the pressure drops down back to where it was before. And that's just kind of an idealization about the way this works. So compression, combustion, power stroke, exhaust. And then what you have down here is basically your exhaust stroke. So um, we'll call this five, I guess. We're at bottom dead center on the power stroke, so now we've got to go back up to 
top dead center on the exhaust stroke and because the exhaust valves open the pressure doesn't go up and obviously this is just on paper it's an idealization we all know that it doesn't actually work just like this but uh, exhaust stroke and then right after the exhaust stroke uh, the volume uh, comes back up because we're on the intake stroke and then we repeat the process so it goes from here compression combustion power stroke exhaust exhaust stroke intake stroke so that's the auto cycle now that we've now that we've looked at that let's take this engine and only change the compression ratio now what's going to happen when we do that so what's going to happen probably more than likely is that rather than it coming to this point here because it's going to compress that that volume of gas into a smaller volume it's actually going to come up to here like this right so what we'll have is a a different uh, a different curve there it'll start out at the same place but it'll kind of go up like this and the thing about when you multiply pressure times volume that's actually it comes out in in units of energy so what you've done here by doing this going from here to here is you've done work on the gas inside the chamber inside the cylinder and chamber you've done work on that gas with the higher compression ratio you actually had to put more work into compressing the gas that much you know it might seem kind of reasonable to think that that this change in pressure here that you got from a certain compression ratio change that you'd get the same amount pressure change there and then in turn kind of what you'd get is something that kind of looks like this something that kind of looks like that and kind of now again I haven't done such a great job but the idea is that if if it worked like that so if a change in the compression ratio yielded a change in pressure for in this part of the diagram now if you had the same amount of pressure change after combustion had happened in this area here there would be a pretty good chance that this area here might be very close to the amount of area in this between these two curves here you're putting work into the gas and out here you're getting mechanical work out of the gas but the the idea would be that if if the area if the difference in the area between these two curves was the same as the area in between these two curves then what you got out would have been the same as what you put in and in that sense the compression ratio wouldn't have done anything but we all know that raising the compression ratio does do something so here's here's the here's my opinion this is what I'm gonna say and I did actually some math on this a long time ago that uh, I don't even want to try to do today because it was very difficult but what I'm gonna say is that what the and like I said I don't have any data to back this up so but the the math that I did showed that if you have a change in your compression ratio you're going to have a change in pressure on this part of the on this part of the diagram you're going to the starting pressure will be the same but the ending pressure will be higher with the higher compression ratio what i saw in the math that i did and it's been a long time but i found that this change in pressure here was proportional was directly proportional to the change in compression ratio if the math i did was correct and this is a big if that I found that the this change in pressure here wasn't proportional and what was happening what it what my math kind of showed was this change in pressure here went up with the square of the compression ratio so that the idea being is that the extra work that you put in here was less than the extra work you got out of it so you'd have something instead of this one here you'd have something more like
like that. So what you'd get is all this area, extra area under the curve. So it'd be that, all that area under the curve. So let me just uh, put it all one color so you kind of see it better if I can do that. And none of this is done to scale. I'm just doing a represent, it's just a basic representation of what I think it does. So, but what I'm doing here is trying to show you that that area there is greater than that area there. And this is what I think happens. So what happens is, yes, you put more work into the system when you compress that, that uh, gas inside the cylinder, but because this, this pressure change changed greater here, you end up with a greater change in area underneath the curve. And what that means is what you got out of it was greater than what you put into it. And basically what the compression ratio does is that it doesn't make the it doesn't really make the engine burn more fuel. It doesn't bring in more air or less air. It just makes the engine more efficient so that the fuel that brings in more of that gets turned into mechanical energy. This is the way I look at it. It's my opinion of how an increase in compression ratio improves performance. And uh, anyway, that's, uh, I guess that's all I got for this week, and I guess we'll see you next time.